Ready? <laughs> I think the idea for fatalities just came from the desire to rub it in someone's face, to just finish that person. We always liked the idea of letting the player, you know, get a free hit on somebody. The fatality plays an importance because it's a way to really put like a, an exclamation point on the end of a fight. It's a sort of an arcade mentality, you know, when everybody's competing against each other, you know, and everybody's watching, you know, you want to be able to just jab that guy, you know, a little bit more. And if you were able to do a fatality, it was something that made you cool, you know, how did you do it? And you can kind of either keep it a secret or, you know, give, uh, share the information. It was a major enticement. I think as time went on, it became an expected part of a Mortal Kombat game that you couldn't conceivably put out a Mortal Kombat game without having fatalities in it. Some of the ideas for fatalities in Mortal Kombat 1 came from pop culture, you know, from some movies that we had seen, uh, comic books or whatever, just, you know, things that really struck us as being violent. <laughs> From Mortal Kombat 1, probably my favorite fatality was the one that was the most controversial, which is the, uh, the spine rip from Sub-Zero. You know, that was the one that usually got the most attention, the most oohs and ahs in the arcades. We wanted to do a sort of a fatality, sort of a move, but that wasn't really a fatality. When we came up with the idea of the pit and knocking somebody down into the spikes below, we really wanted to make sure that we had a fatality in the game that anybody could do. It actually wasn't played up like a regular fatality because it didn't have the whole choreography. It was just all of a sudden you were punched off the, off the bridge and you fell and died. With Mortal Kombat 2, we wanted to do everything bigger and better. And with, also with that game, we realized that fatalities had such a big impact into people's reaction to the game. With Mortal Kombat 1, it was something that we threw in there. We said, okay, maybe people are going to like it. Let's see. With Mortal Kombat 2, we knew that was a showcase feature for these games. We had a second fatality to give the game some legs. I mean, there wasn't just one fatality you had to learn. Now you had to learn two. I think it was all about being, you know, bigger and badder and better. And we really wanted to kind of push the envelope again, kind of do something that was very, um, you know, over the top in terms of uh, just the, the, the shock value. My favorite fatality from MK2 was Katana's kiss and inflate fatality. We really started, you know, introducing levels of humor into the game. It wasn't so dark and so when Katana kissed the guy and then he inflated and exploded, you know, it was outrageous, it was violent, but at the same time there was there was humor in it. I liked always kind of combining the two. It's kind of like, you know, you know, dark comedy. My most memorable fatality from Mortal Kombat 2 would probably be Liu Kang turning into the dragon and biting the guy. Uh, I worked on that particular one and it kind of stands out because it's so big. You know, the dragon, you don't expect, you know, a character, he's the only character that turns into anything, I think, in Mortal Kombat 2. I think Kung Lao's, because Kung Lao has always been one of my favorite characters. He kind of has this uh, Clint Eastwood, the brow thing going on and uh, the blade on the hat and it was just it's, it's gruesome is the you know taking a hand and uh, split down the middle you know and the, and the body does the whole blah, blah, blah. I guess I remember the scorpion one where he demasks and then you see his skull and then he burns you up with a flame with flames out of his mouth this is the only um, remaining artifact of the infamous uh, plastic skeleton model basically so we have to take a model like this the like skeleton arm and we move it up and put like a piece of clay in here, take a picture, move it up, put a piece of clay, take a picture, and do this. So it's essentially you'd have this motion. So all of a sudden, then we put that in the computer and that would uh, go ahead and like paint fire on it. If you ever were caught on fire, this is the natural motion you would probably do. victory. We had to add more stage fatalities to Mortal Kombat 2 to up, you know, the ante on, you know, from Mortal Kombat 1. 
The pit was a huge success in Mortal Kombat 1, so we wanted to kind of come up with like a pseudo 3D version of it. We had a pit, you knock the guy down the pit, but this time the camera angle was from the top, and the guy is falling, so he's stationary, but the background scales up, so it looks like it's getting closer. So that was really, it was cool. So the guy would go and smack, you know, hit the, hit the ground. I think the idea of friendships came from the reaction to all the attention that Mortal Kombat 1 was getting with its fatalities. And so it was kind of like our way of making fun of that, all the attention that that game got because of the fatalities. And so the thought was, well, we can be nice too and put in these friendships instead. So instead of ripping someone's heart out, you can give them a cake. My favorite friendship move is probably uh, Liu Kang's disco dance one. That's probably the, the silliest one. It's just so completely out of character. The friendship that sticks out in my mind is the one where Jax has the paper dolls and, you know, stretches them out. That's pretty funny. <laughs> My recollection of Babalities is I remember Dan Forden, who's the audio guy, he came up to me and he said, you know, hey, how about we do something called a Babality where you turn your opponent into a baby. And I'm not sure what that was about, but I was probably, I think it was from searching through sound effect CDs for stuff for the game, and I came across some babies crying or something. And I don't know, it just sort of popped in my head. It's like, well, what if like you turned them into a baby and then they would cry or something? And so, and I was like, you know, why, why would you do that? And he was just like, no, I just think it'd be funny. And, um, you know, that was pretty much good enough for me. So, you know, all it required was for us to make, you know, 12 little baby images. One of the improvements to uh, Mortal Kombat 3 over Mortal Kombat 2 was the addition of using 3D graphics to come up with some of the backgrounds. A lot of the effects, you know, from little blood explosions. They weren't so much done by hand anymore. They're actually done in 3D. MK3, we took the same approach to making that game as we did with Mortal Kombat 2, where basically it's more, bigger, better. Uh, some of my favorites from MK3 are probably um, Sindel's when she screams your skin off. She's a very loud voice. Reptile, where he does the, he kind of pukes acid on the opponent and you see him kind of, the acid eat away at the other guy. Sector had one of my favorite fatalities in Mortal Kombat 3. His chest doors would open up, this huge mechanical device would open up, squish him, and go right back into his chest. I thought it was funny because there was no way that size of a squisher could come out of his chest, but yet it did. Also there was one where Jax kind of grew into this giant and then you kind of stepped on the other guy. Again, that was a little bit more towards the humorous side, but it was something kind of outrageous nonetheless. Liu Kang wins. Animality. Animalities, I believe, were created by the fans. They wanted to see different modes. They wanted to see nudalities, which we, of course we couldn't do. And one of the rumors that wasn't true was this feature called an animality. That someone put out there, oh, you can turn Scorpion into an animal, and um, which wasn't true. But then we decided to make it true in MK3. The reason some of these alities weren't done past Mortal Kombat 3 is because it's difficult to get things to transform in a, in a 3D environment. I mean, I suppose you could do it with a puff of smoke that covers the change, but to morph, you know, one completely different model into another completely different model, you know, is a little difficult to do. It was definitely different doing fatalities in MK4 as opposed to the previous games because it was, everything was in 3D. Definitely I think the biggest thing was the ability to sever limbs and um, we were never able to really do that before and so when you were able to blow people up and, um, and just you know tear them literally limb from limb uh, that opened up a lot of creative input for more things that we could do. Now we can move the camera around. We did a lot of funny, st like, mm -hmm. kind of like, maybe three camera cuts of the same, like, you know, explosion or something like that. Like, big thing is like, you know, we'll have the body blow up, we have the camera cut around it, then like the last camera cut, you see the, the head rotating and hit the camera and fall. Well, the biggest limitation on the animation in the 2D games was that 
Every frame of animation was an entire separate image. So it was very memory intensive to have smooth animation. So with motion capture, we have this full fluid motion that wasn't available in a 2D game. Animation-wise, it actually becomes a little bit easier because you only have to capture the motion once and then you apply it to a 3D model as opposed to having every single character in the digitized world. You'd have to have every single character act out having every fatality done to them.